And it has been revealed to you, O Muhammad, the Prophet of Allah, and to the messengers and prophets of Allah before you, that if you were to associate others with Allah, if you were to commit shirk, then all of your deeds would be nullified and you would be among the losers. The most important thing we need to know is that no act of worship can be rendered for anyone but Allah. And in the same, in, in the same breath, we need to understand that no one is similar to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, لَيْسَ كَمِثْلِهِ شَيْءٌ وَهُوَ السَّمِيعُ الْبَصِيرُ There is nothing like unto Allah, nothing similar to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He is all hearing and all watchful. Allah Azza wa Jal says in the Quran, and most of them believe not in Allah except that they are in the state of shirk. وَمَا يُؤْمِنُ أَكْثَرُهُمْ بِاللَّهِ إِلَّا وَهُمْ مُشْرِكُونَ So their belief in Allah is tarnished by associating others with Allah. Now if someone prays and fasts and does everything that is mentioned in the Quran and the Sunnah, Yet every Friday he goes to a temple and he prostrates to Buddha. Is he a Muslim? Definitely not. If, if someone thinks and believes that other than Allah controls the universe, if someone believes that it is permissible to call dead people, Oh Hussein, Oh Ali, Oh Fatima, O oh, Tijani, O oh, Badawi, O oh, Baba so and so, do this for me, grant me a child, pay off my debts, do that and do this. Definitely this is shirk, you're associating others with Allah. They claim and say, no, we're just taking them as intercede, uh, uh, means of intercession. They are interceding uh, for us at the sight of Allah. This is exactly what shirk is. We need to understand the names and qualities of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are unique because if they were not unique, then what makes him greater than everybody else? And we need to understand the fact that Allah is in supreme control means no one else is in similar control. So if anyone was in similar control or shared part of that with Allah, what would make him so unique? So. It is in order to understand this oneness of Allah, the scholars have highlighted three major aspects of concentration where in order to make sure that we are not dwindling, we ensure that firstly acts of worship are only for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So he is Al-Ilah, he is the, the one who is worthy of worship, number one. Number two, the fact that Allah is the maker, the sustainer, the cherisher, the provider, the curer, alone it makes him Rabbun. So we do not associate partners in that aspect as well. These are two aspects that are all, both connected to the same Allah, which means all we are trying to do is to protect ourselves from associating partners with the one Allah. Similarly, when it comes to his names and qualities, like you have uh, the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, where he calls himself Ar-Rahim. Ar-Rahim is a level of mercy that is very, very high. And it is a special type of mercy that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has on a specialized group of people who are uh, believers. So no one can call himself Ar-Rahim besides Allah because that is Allah alone. If we believe that there is another Ar-Rahim, then we have associated partners with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in his names and quality. Now we come on to La ilaha illallah, the statement of Tawheed. La ilaha illallah, the statement of Tawheed. When the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam called the people to Islam, the only thing that he would focus on was the statement La ilaha illallah. He would say, oh my people, say La ilaha illallah and you will be successful. So, Quraysh didn't really have a big problem 
with the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam as a person. Happy with that? Quraysh didn't really have a major issue with him as a person. They certainly didn't sort of have a, a major uh, sort of uh, issue or a major uh, sort of concern with Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam as a person. Their problem was what he was teaching. What's the evidence for this? They offered him to be a leader. They offered him, you can be a king among us. With what condition? What condition did they put for him being a king? That he stopped saying, La ilaha illallah. So they had no problem with him being in charge. Like, what, you know, sometimes we see in the Quran that people had a problem with the Prophet. For example, uh, How can he be given the kingdom over us and we are more deserving of the kingdom than him? How can Allah choose him amongst us when we are more deserving of being chosen than him? This wasn't the problem of Quraysh. Nobody in Quraysh said, I'm more deserving of being close to Allah than Muhammad But their problem was La ilaha illallah. And Allah says, They wish that you would compromise in your belief so that they would then compromise in their belief. So they even said to him, we'll worship Allah for most of the year and you can just worship our idols for one day or two days or part of the year. Or you can worship our idols for a month and you can worship our idols or, or a day and you can worship our idols for a day and they offered him many different compromises but he never ever compromised on this statement la ilaha illallah what do we mean by tawheed tawheed is derived from the word one so when you say the verb wahada meaning that he made the things into one and tawheed is the belief in the oneness of allah so first of all the belief in the existence of allah which every human being know and every creature on earth believes of such, such a thing. Then you have the three divisions of Tawheed. And these three divisions are Tawheed al-Rububiyyah, the Lordship Tawheed, Tawheed al-Uluhiyyah, the Worship Tawheed. And then you have Tawheed al-Asma wa sifat the Tawheed of Allah's beautiful names and attributes. All of these three types are combined in a verse of the Quran. Allah Azza wa Jal says, Lord of the heavens and the earth. So this is Tawheed al-Rububiyya. When you acknowledge that Allah Azza wa Jal is the owner, is the creator, is the facilitator. This is part of the Lordship Tawheed. Lord of the heavens and the earth and all that is between them. So worship him alone and be consistent and patient in his worship. This is Tawheed al-Uluhiyyah, the Tawheed of worship. Allah then on, goes on to say, do you know of any who is similar to him? And this is the Tawheed of al-Asma was sifat 